I think it's disgusting what they're doing to him, but he's doing what he has to do, said Beverly Ryder, who traveled from next door Maine to the Portsmouth Hotel Wednesday morning to begin waiting for Trump. He's doing it for us. At one point, after Trump quoted praise from his former White House physician, now a Republican congressman from Texas and a fierce Biden critic, the crowd burst out laughing. That's Ronnie Jackson of Texas, Trump said, as if he was crediting a fellow performer on stage. Later, he quipped about former President Jimmy Carter, who is currently in hospice care in Georgia with terminal cancer. He's happy because his presidency is now considered brilliant in comparison to Joe Biden, Trump said. Would you trust Joe Biden to run your store while you go off to New Hampshire to find a small hill to go skiing? Trump asked at one point, riffing on his likely Democratic rival in November like a stand-up comic. New Hampshire is the next state in the Republican nominating contest, and Trump seems intent on mixing court with campaigning. On Wednesday, Trump was warned by the judge in the case that he'd be tossed from the courtroom if he kept talking while Carroll testified. I would love it, Trump replied. Last week, as his rivals crisscrossed first in the nation Iowa before Monday's caucuses, Trump largely stayed in New York and Washington, attending legal proceedings in two cases against him and making sure his voters saw him as fighting back against persecution. He won Iowa with 51 percent of the caucus vote. While that trial start date may be delayed, Trump will have to juggle stump speeches and his legal defense throughout the year as he did on Wednesday. Trump has made his legal woes a centerpiece of his presidential primary campaign, and his voters don't seem phased by his increasingly confrontational approach to the U.S. justice system. You know I've been indicted more than Al Capone, Trump told the crowd. You ever heard of Al Capone, probably the greatest mobster of them all? The scene in New Hampshire was a somewhat surreal early look at the coming campaign, in which the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination is still scheduled to face his first criminal trial on March 5th, which is also known as Super Tuesday because 14 states vote in the nominating contest. One of the attendees, Dan Steele, knows what a long day in court is like being a retired trial lawyer for the Justice Department. So he was extra appreciative that Trump journeyed to New Hampshire after spending the day in a New York courtroom, where he sat defiantly during his trial to determine damages for defaming a magazine writer after she accused him of sexual assault. He mocked his rivals in the primary, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Then he quickly went off message, touting a cognitive test he took as president, his administration's campaign against the Islamic State group and other familiar themes. Eventually he came around to bemoaning his legal woes. He said that Ronnie Jackson, now a Texas congressman, advised him if he didn't eat so much junk food, then he'd be around for 200 years. The news comes after reports suggested that his wife Melania is behind his recent apparent health boost. He said, I feel like I'm about 35 years old, before adding that, Cognitively, I'm better now than I was 20 years ago, as part of his bid to become only the second non-consecutive U.S. president since Grover Cleveland. The 77-year-old, the oldest Republican nomination contender, told supporters in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, that he's fit and sharp enough to become U.S. president again.